Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in to another video. So behind me here, I got a handful of broken outboard motors. Pretty much only buy broken, cheap outboard motors here. Um, some of these I've worked on, some of them I haven't touched, but in this video we're gonna try to get as many of these as we can running. Um, I'll probably save this big one. This is a 50 horsepower four stroke Evan Rude for another day. And I already made a video of this one running, but it hasn't ran in a couple months, so maybe I'll fire it up. And this one sunk, I'm pretty sure. There was too much sand in the cylinder, but maybe we can get it running. But I think all the rest of them, I think we can get running with a little bit of maintenance. So let's try to get all these running. Okay, we got here on the left is a Nissan 3.5. You can see by the decals there. And it's a Hatsu 2.5. So different brand of motors, but they pretty much are the identical motors. You know, other than one's a long shaft and one's a short shaft, and really the only other difference is this 3.5 has a neutral and forward switch and this one has just a forward switch. So the story with these is that this Nissan here picked up for 50 bucks. I was working on it and I found out it had low compression because it had a bad, <coughs> excuse me, had a bad cylinder here. So it was cracked on the side here. I tried JB Weld, I tried to weld it, but it didn't really work. But then this motor, this Tatsu 2.5 came along for free. So I picked that up and I swapped the cylinder head onto this one. So now it's running and I'll show you how it fires up right now. This one was in my last video on the Zodiac. So um, that was the only time I had it running, but we'll just fire it up anyways. It's been a couple weeks. Okay, I got some water for this Nissan 3.5 here. And there's a fuel line here that you just turn to the open position. And if you just turn this a bit, that lets some air in to let the suction go. It's like a gravity fed carburetor here. No primer bulb. Um, then to start this, you just put it to the start position and move this up to the close. And then once it's running, you switch to the open position. So we'll fire it up now and see if it runs. So we got this running good now. Um, I'm gonna swap this power head and put it onto here. I actually haven't fired this up yet at all. Um, I did clean the carb a while back. I can't remember if I put fuel in it or not. So um, I think with the power head on here, I think it should be running, but we'll find out. Okay, I swapped the power head on here. It's just four bolts. So I just took the whole thing off with the spark plug and put it on here. So yeah, let's see if uh, this one wants to fire up. Neutral. Looks like there's a little bit of water leakage here, so I think I might need to tighten these bolts a little bit more. Alright, let's try that again. Yeah, there's no more leakage now, and it's pumping a lot better water. Yeah, for a free motor, I think this is running pretty good. Um, I do need to get another power head for this. This part is like a hundred bucks, but I might just wait until another one of these comes up for cheap and use the parts for that. And so what I got here now, finally off of eBay, is a uh, used cylinder head for this Tahatsu 2.5 motor. And uh, it's actually a different part number than uh, what it's supposed to be. Um, I've been looking on eBay, looking, typing in Tahatsu and Nissan since they're partner companies the cylinder head on this and it'd come up for like 80 or 100 bucks but uh on ebay i brought in my search a little bit and off of a mercury i got this for 30 bucks on ebay right here so uh yeah sometimes if you broaden your search a little bit and even type in a different part number i got pretty lucky on this one and it seems to fit uh, let's go work on some other motors here um i guess we'll start with this honda here it's a honda 7.5 horsepower four stroke um, i believe by the decals it's like late 80s um, I picked this up for 60 bucks. I don't really know if it runs or not. I haven't tested it, so we'll find out. So the first thing I did was I swapped out the fuel connector here. So here's the old one. This is the original Honda one. And the newer Hondas have like a rectangle piece, but these ones have a rounded piece. And the connector that goes with this is really hard to find. So I found it easier just to buy a Honda male and female connector and just swap that over. 
So that's what I did. Um, we're just gonna hook it up to a gas tank and see if it runs. I haven't even messed with it yet. So let's just give it a quick overview, but it looks pretty clean actually. I mean, the guy said it was running. I don't know how long ago, but let's just make sure it's got oil in here. But for 60 bucks, it looks pretty clean. Um, yeah, it's got oil, it's not too brown. So we might have a runner here. Choke it. Not a bad start. screw might need to be adjusted slightly let's see when I take it all the way back to the beginning position oh no it didn't die let's just see if this stop button works right here cool let's fire it up one more time here Quiet too. Looks like this is a newer filter. Fuel looks pretty clean in there. Yeah, no hesitation at all. I think we got a good running motor here. Okay, so the next motor here is a Briggs and Stratton. It's a five horsepower, four stroke. Um, it's air cooled actually, so there's no impeller to cool it, so it's not water cooled. So it's pretty much just an overhyped lawnmower engine. Um, but I got this for free from my friend Shay and Carl. So thank you guys for giving me this. So um, I did clean the carburetor a while back. Um, if we can find it here. Um, it was super nasty. Um, these are some new lines. So these lines that were on there with how much ethanol is in fuel, it melted it into this sludge. And it had these gray fuel lines on the fuel tank. So there's a bunch of sludge built up in the carb that I cleaned. But it has been sitting for a while, maybe like four or five months since I last cleaned it, but let's see if we can get it running. Okay, got some fresh fuel pumped into it. Um, I don't think I technically need water since it is air-cooled and there's not an impeller, but we have it hooked up anyways. So yeah, let's fire it up and see if she wants to run. I'm gonna choke it. Time to cheat here. Got some starting fluid. I'm gonna put it into this air box here. I think this should uh, maybe entice it into starting. So if you can see up in there, <laughs> this fuel line came undone. So if I pump the primer bulb, you can see fuel is just leaking out of there. So I'll, I'll hook that up and that should be our issue that we're having. All right. Finally got her running. I need another carb clean. Yep. She just died when I gave her throttle. See if she goes in the gear. She goes into gear. All right, so this motor needs another carb clean. There's just four bolts holding it together. Two right here, and then one here, and then another one back in there. I got the carb off here. Um, there's just a 12 mil little screw holding it on right here. 
And I cleaned this once before, but I let it sit a while, but I kind of figured by how dirty it was the first time I cleaned it that it probably needed another cleaning. And uh, yeah, check that out. I don't even know what that is. Just old gas deposits still built up in the carb. But yeah, this wouldn't have ran like this. Just a little carb cleaner. Look how much cleaner that looks. So if you look right here, to me, that looks like the plastic liner from these gray fuel lines. Um, I've said it in some of my other videos that these gray fuel lines are no good since they got plastic liners in them. And with how much ethanol is in today's fuel, it just melts these liners. So for these smaller carburetors, I got these little micro drill bits. I mean, you could get like a small staple or a paper clip and bend it, but I find that these little micro drill bit set that I got works good for cleaning these carbs just to get in and make sure that all these passages are clear so fuel can get through. So yeah, still working on this Briggs and Stratton motor and uh, I got the fuel pump kind of isolated here and I'm not too familiar with these motors, but I think this fuel pump is bad. Um, maybe it's got a bad diaphragm or something, but if you look underneath there, when I uh, pump the primer bulb here, I can reach it. It's leaking fuel out of there and I don't think that's normal. So, uh, yeah, I got a new fuel pump here. It's only like $10 on Amazon. So, uh, I'll try replacing that and see if it leaks. Yeah, so now I got this new fuel pump on. We look underneath now. Now when I pump the primer bulb, it's not leaking any fuel. So, uh, I think that old one had a bad diaphragm on it. So hopefully this new one makes it run right. All right, with that new fuel pump and another carb clean, I finally got it dialed in. Fire it up for you guys. Give it a little choke. again just to make sure it's still running. Alright the next motor here is a Honda BF75 7.5 horsepower four stroke it's a short shaft and I got this for a hundred bucks came with a gas tank too. Um, the only thing I've done so far is I was actually missing the uh, this transom bracket here, so I picked one up off eBay, off of the uh, Honda 10 horse, which actually fit. So that's the only thing I've done, so let's dive into this. Just a quick overview. It actually doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty clean. Um, the story I got with it is that uh, it's been sitting around for a while. It was a guy's backup, backup motor. Um, so I have no idea the last time it ran. A uh, few things I see wrong with it already. Um, one, this one isn't too bad, but uh, just the uh, st start and shift little piece here that just tells you the starting position of it um, came off just because this rubber is all warped here. Um, the stop button is broken. Um, I actually got a, a safety lanyard stop switch that I'm going to put on here. Uh, what else? We got a broken fuel line in here. Um, I'm going to put a, uh, another Yamaha connector on this too. This is the original Honda one. Um, other than that, that's all I'm really seeing so far. So it's been a couple weeks since I've worked on it, but as you can see here, I uh, broke the spout on this fuel pump here. I mean, it is like a 40 year old fuel pump, so uh, I guess I should have been more gentle. But uh, I got a, a new fuel pump here off eBay for pretty cheap, so I'll put that on. So with these fuel pumps, there's just a little filter behind here. That, uh, oh yeah, this one's super dried out. But, uh, Actually looks pretty clean, so I might swap the filter from the other one if it looks in better condition. Well, I just pulled this off this other one, and there's so much crap in there. Like, check this out. I don't even know what <laughs> that is, but uh, that would explain why it wasn't running for the guy. So based off how dirty that uh, fuel filter looked in the fuel pump, I'm gonna clean the carb here. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts on each side holding it together that I. Uh, already undid so we'll dive into this all right we got this carb off here and uh looking at these screws here holding this float bolt down they don't even have any chip marks so 
there's probably a good chance this carb has never been cleaned or opened but uh let's uh open her up all right let's see what we got oh yeah look at all that crap there's a ton on the needle there down on the sides in there too all right just like the last carb you know the drill clean the jets get all the grime and gunk out of it and uh throw her back on all right we got this ebay fuel pump on there got the clean carb got another yamaha fuel connector here let's uh fire up and see if she wants to run Alright, quick update on this Honda 7.5 short shaft. Um, after a few carb cleans, um, I also dialed in this air mixer screw here a bit. And uh, it wasn't running perfectly good. And I also took out this fuel filter that goes right here in the fuel pump. I think this one was just too brittle and warped and was restricting fuel flow. But I think I got this dialed in now, so I'll fire it up. So this motor doesn't have a working stop button, it's right in there, there's normally a pin that goes in there, but it's actually just an open circuit, so if you just take something that has a plastic end or rubber end and just push it in there, you can stop it, but uh, that's not very efficient, so uh, I'm going to replace this stop button here and put a safety switch. Okay, so I got this safety kill switch in place here. I haven't hooked up the wiring yet, but when you buy one of these, make sure you get one that has the threads in the back. So uh, here was this one I had, it was just a $5 one, but I kind of broke it trying to put it in because you have your shift linkage here that uh, this bar sticks out too far. And so this back end here with the threads in the front was hitting that. So uh, make sure you get one that sticks out in the front here and has the threads in the back if you do plan on doing this route. So here's the wiring for the old uh, stop button that's broken. But uh, if you look at it here, you have this wire coming from the ignition coil that goes to the stop button. So that's our power wire. And then you just have a ground wire going down to this bolt right here. So to do that onto this connector here um, for this stop switch, I have a brown wire and a black wire. So the brown wire it's gonna go to the ignition cable wire here. Then this black wire will be the ground wire that goes to that bolt in here. All right, so it's been a while since I've worked on any motors, but uh, still working on this Honda 7.5 Honda short shaft. And uh, I got the uh, kill switch installed here. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. But it turns out the wires on this kill switch were backward. So normally, this uh, orange wire here is supposed to go to this ignition coil, but they were switched. So this orange wire is now the ground wire down in here and the black wire coming off the kill switch connects to the ignition coil. So I'll show you how it works now. We okay, got it dialed in, running good now. And now with this kill switch too. It shuts it off. Here's the five motors that I worked on that I got up and running laid out here. And uh, I apologize for not posting that much over the last couple months. I've been pretty busy and uh, it's been a pretty rainy winter here in Sacramento. So haven't had much time to go fishing or be outdoors all that much, but I'll try to post more videos moving forward. So yeah, if you guys like this type of content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.